What's up, Renegade Nation? Before we begin the video, I'd like to give a shout out to our most recent Patreon supporters and YouTube members. Ethan Bergeron, The Gimpster 101, Jackie the Sexy Hobby Cook, Dark Paradigm, Tyler R., Luis Naito, Vesta X Owner, David, Nick Scholes, The Bushloft, Danny Puff, Brandon, Shad Church, Ouga, Darius, Lucy Short, Vincenzo, Sega Man 92, Alan Barty, Craze Cartoon 13, John Reed, James Butterworth, Scott Stevens, Thor Yang, Katie Stockton, Otaku, Dark Paradigm, Kayla McRae, Reggie Johnson, Full Blown Marxism, Redemption, and as always, I'd like to give a shout out to our executive producers, The Anime Hybrid and Joshua Fix, and welcome our new executive producer, The Oil Guy. Thank you all very much for your support. If you want to support us on Patreon, feel free to click the link down below in the description to find out more. And if you want to become a YouTube member, just hit the join button, which is right next to the subscribe button. Hopefully, we'll see you all there. Peace out. <laughs> Nick! Nick, no! Nick, please, I'm begging you! Please! Oh, God! Ah! The Dune franchise has been very, very highly sought after for, like, a, like just a good, high-quality film. For instance, you talked earlier to me about the 1985 huh? film with Kyle McLaughlin... Uh, you said that it. You said that you felt it was really well done, and a I thought lot, I thought it was cool as heck, man. Well, a lot of people look back on it as you know, in terms of cult status, you know, with the limitations of 1985 special effects and all that, versus what we have nowadays. Nowadays, it's kind of crazy the stuff we've got, what we have at our disposal, the special effects, which they actually did a, a sort of a sequel thing, uh, the Children of Dune, I believe, that had James McAvoy in it. Uh, it was actually it was actually pretty cool. I I actually thought that was pretty. Was that, neat. Was that the sci fi miniseries? Yes. It was. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, I remember it. I don't. I remember it, but I don't remember it. It's it it was okay in term, but in terms of its comparison to the original, yeah, it wasn't as it was not as good. But the Dune franchise, you know, it, they've been wanting to do another like big, uh, big budget version of Dune now for a long time, trying get the mainstream appeal going for it. It's already got it's already got the cult following of the original film plus the following from the book series and just there's just... a lot of classic literature is really hard to translate into a visual format. It, it it's very difficult. I, I feel like Lord of the Rings kind of shocked people with how successful it was because I I never really thought that they would be able to do a live action Lord of the Rings. Uh, well, mm. impossible undertakings though. I think that's one thing that great directors seek to do for instance th it leads to more inspiration we actually saw in the uh, cgi video that was done uh, vfx artist react to lord of the rings uh it was actually james cameron seeing smeagol uh and uh the progress that they did with motion capture and digital replacement that actually inspired him to make avatar a lot of people told james cameron what you want to do for Avatar is impossible. It'll never be able to be done, at least within your lifetime. And he did it. Now he's doing four more, apparently. Apparently. <clears throat> but Lord of the Rings, you know, was an impossible undertaking. But Peter Jackson, he formulated what would work best in terms of film narrative. I mean, the exclusion of Tom Bombadil and several story pl plot lines. I know people, uh, you know, overstate, hey, where's Tom Bombadil? Hey, where's this? Hey, where's that? Yeah, and also the over-inclusion of certain things. For instance, in the first, uh, in the Fellowship of the Ring, uh, you know, Arwen uh, pretty much coming to save Frodo. It's like, that wasn't necessary, but honestly, it's those little changes that honestly make the film better and flow better, and it's ch changes that are made, I don't really mind. That's one thing about Dune. If they do make certain thematic changes for the sake of film, I think it would work better and overall flow better as a film even though I know literature heads will lose their shit over some of the stuff that's excluded. But I mean, Dune's a huge undertaking. Yeah, man. I mean, it happens. Yeah, Dune is a huge undertaking. And yeah, plus, I, I don't expect it to be exactly like the book, because what movie really ever is. Yeah, know? well, I mean, well, I was thinking more like, like how Lovecraft never translates to film 
well at all. It's well, a lot one of, of the times... problems there is he's got so many themes that are based off of you trying to use your imagination well, that's to imagine. That's what I'm saying. A lot of well, writing things that can't be imagined. A lot of writing so, does. So I feel like that's why movies lose out because once yeah. you once you put a face to it. You know, sometimes it the feeling doesn't match. When I heard people... they were making the color out of shape, I was like, I don't, I don't feel like translating that to a visual form works because, because that's the whole point of it. It's a it's a, it's a new, color you can't. It's a visualize. new color that yeah. no one's ever seen before. Yeah, and you, you know? can't do that. Yeah, like you can't just make that. It would end up being kind of like pink or we'll something. Just make it pink. Like, yeah, yeah. It's like a pink, right. like, like acid drip pink sort of before, thing. Yeah. Like, well. I mean, it's, yeah. it's physically impossible to make it the way he described yeah. it. And that's what was creepy about it to yeah. start with. Well, so. actually, what I would have done is... Just like the have... music of Eric Zahn. Like, you could try, like, to replicate that with, like, you know, some crazy-ass music theory. But it, the point is, it was something that a musician knew was impossible to be played. Like, impossible <laughs> sound. Sounds that well, no one's ever heard before. So. You, you know what I would have actually done... For uh, you know the the color that you can't see, I would have actually gone to people who have hypersensitivity to like more colors and have a higher sense of the color spectrums that are out there, and I would have actually brought them in and had them do like a litmus test on these different things because and see how they would perceive color and get there and get them involved with it in some way to where you know norm you know people with average eyesight. It would be something. It would the, you could tweak it in a way to where it could be familiar but unfamiliar in some way. That's what I would have tried to do. But again, you know, uh, I wasn't in control. It would just of it, be so. super challenging. Like, it would be. Either way. But again, massive undertakings are often are often like like some filmmakers delight in those the other thing i was going to say is like even though we have you know modern technology and stuff for this film like i still worry because valerian and the city of a thousand planets i was pretty stoked to go see but and then i ended up saying afterwards i was like man that was the prettiest shitty movie i think i've ever seen well <laughs> it's because yet again they're trying to encapsulate and stuff so much like story into a two-hour film well not just that but they made some just Stupid decisions. Really dumb. Yeah. Really well, dumb decisions. it's because that was Luc Besson. Luc Besson yeah. has, in my opinion, not done a great film since I'd say, I'd say the early two thousands. So as him as a director, he's sort of, he's made his masterworks. I don't know. If I he mean, wrote he did it. Leon the Professional, I don't know which if he I wrote think it is, too or not, but whoever wrote it. Well, I don't know what the fuck they were thinking. Well, but. again, this to me is where we arrive with. Denny Villeneuve, the the director for this. The director for this is one of my favorite modern directors. I would say he's up there with David Fincher in my mind. Uh, this guy directed Arrival, Sicario, directed Blade Runner twenty forty nine, oh. like beautiful films. Now those are all films I haven't seen, but I've heard really good stuff about. Yeah, and he also and uh, <clears throat> that's pretty cool. Yeah, and uh, also he did Prisoners with Hugh Jackman, uh, but. Overall, though, he's had a outstanding, uh, outstanding uh, track, record. track record so far with his films. And here, when we arrive at Dune, I'm just excited to see what he's going to pull off because he's got a great cast, he has a huge budget, he has a good studio behind him that is completely supportive of everything he's wanting to do. I guess let's see what this preview's like. I know a lot of people out there have been dying for us to react to it, so let's get to it. Here we go. This is Dune official trailer. Come on. Play already, dang it. There we go. <laughs> There's something happening to me. There's something awakening in my mind. I can't control it. What did you see? There's a crusade coming. Do you often dream things that happen just as you dream them? Yes. <laughs> the test is simple. Remove your hand from the box. And you die. What's in the box? Pain. You inherit too much power. You have proven you can rule yourself. Oh, that's you good. Something none of your ancestors learned. 
My father rules an entire planet. He's losing it. He's getting a richer one. He'll lose that one too. Arrakis is a death trap. An animal caught in a trap will gnaw off its own leg to escape. What will you do? Huge worm. Oh! I don't know if it's just cold down here, but I got chills. So. <laughs> I did too. That's pretty bitchin' looking. That looks amazing. Okay, okay. On top of a killer cast, I knew about the cast beforehand. You know, you have Timothy Chalamet, you have Zendaya, you have uh, you have Josh Brolin, you have Oscar Isaac, Rebecca Ferguson, Jason Momoa. Did I say him already? I think yeah, I have, yeah. I don't know. Uh, but you also have Javier Bardem. You have Dave Bautista. Just, God, man. You have Denny Villanova, who is a visionary director, who brings things to life and makes you, and just engrosses you in a story. Oh, my gosh. I... And also, the worms. They got them perfect. Yeah, the shot. The alluded. scale, the look. I actually don't know if that's how you pronounce that. I can't remember how they pronounced it in the first movie, if they even said it, but I've always just read it as Shai Halud whenever I read it. Yeah. So it could be like Shai Halud or, yeah, Shai Halud. or something. Yeah. I just call them sandworms. I'm not a huge dune worms. aficionado. It's hard not to see Drax when I see him, though, now. Well, so. but the uh, thing for is, Dave. well, Dave Bautista. Dave Bautista. <laughs> this song was like Drax. Was like, no. Well, no, no, and I make that association, too. But, hey, it's a good association to make. It's like, I know people uh, probably associated him with himself before that. Well, yeah, I knew him as a wrestler, wrestler before I knew him as, yeah. But I never really watched wrestling that much, so, like, the first time I really saw his face a lot was when I saw Guardians. So. <laughs> yes, and, well, that was a lot of people's mainstream exposure to him. I mean, he's always wanted to get into acting. He always, he was inspired by The Rock, you know, Dwayne The Rock Johnson, to get into acting, and Dave Bautista is a big, intimidating dude. And he he was afraid of being typecast as a villain, which, given his history, you know, he played a villain in in a, in a Bond film. He played uh, several villains in uh, in in uh, several films before that. But he's actually trying to take the role of protagonist a lot more serious because uh, when he did Drax, people were like, "Oh, he's actually funny. He actually can has he actually has good delivery. He actually." <laughs> Isn't just a big scary dude. He's actually yeah. he's actually a teddy bear. Not inside. just funny. He's like above averagely funny or more. Like. Yeah. I mean, Stuber was a comedy, wasn't it? Yeah, like Stuber action, action and also uh, so he's like one of my favorite also parts of those movies. The CIA movie where he was a CIA operative who had to teach that little girl. I forget the name of that one, but I saw the preview for it. It looked pretty funny. Uh, but he also did a hotel uh, that one hotel uh, where I had Jodie Foster in. It. I forget the name of it, but um, actually. Uh, Chelsea, uh, whom we know, actually worked on that film. She was a, uh, a production assistant, and she actually met Dave Bautista, and she said oh, yeah? his hands are about 
she she did a size comparison. She said his hands are pretty much like that, and he is six foot six, two hundred seventy pounds, just an absolute monster of a man. That's a large human. That is a huge man, and honestly, how whatever he plays in, if he commits himself to it, he always does good work. Jason Momoa, same thing. Jason Momoa. After he was on Baywatch and he got in that bar fight and got scars, everyone was just like, oh, he's going to be typecast now. Like, he's, he's the one where I have like the opposite thing, where I'm just like, every time I see him, I'm like, Jason Momoa, and I never like immediately am like... I mean, this, oh, he's... That like, character, I'm just like, Jason Momoa. <laughs> oh, he's, he's, not, he's not dry Aquaman in this? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, it's weird seeing him without a beard. Because honestly, I've seen him with a beard ever since he was Khal Drogo on friggin' Game of Thrones. Well, even in Aquaman, like, I knew he was Aquaman, but I was still like Jason Momoa, like, the whole time, you know? Well, I guess, yeah, I know him from Stargate Atlantis. Yeah, Stargate, and he, he did yeah. have he did have a little bit of something. Well, he had the dread. Yeah. Yeah, I the knew about him too. before, but, like, I mostly was introduced to him in Game of Thrones. So. Yeah, yeah I, I think that was before he married Lisa Bonet. Lisa Bonet is his wife right now, and, you know, they've been married now for, I think, a decade. Yeah, they're... And also... Their setup that they have, like out in the middle of the at middle of the country, is amazing. They've got like a skate park. They've got uh, he's a big rock climber and stuff. Yeah, they yeah. got dirt bike tracks. They got like full like jam rooms for him and his kids and his wife to like jam out and play music and everything. He's also a hell of a bass player too. Uh, but uh, dude, overall, this like also Timothy Chalamet, which he's. Like, he's one of the best new young actors who's, like, trying to take lead roles, and I've been very impressed with him. And also, Zendaya, which, you know, we all see her as Mary Jane, we all see her as, as a, uh, you know, Mary Jane to Tom Holland's Peter Parker, but she's she also does pretty good work, and I just have no complaints about this. I re- like, the visuals, the, like... Just oh my gosh! Hopefully it's as good as its trailer. Yeah, <clears throat> I hope so. Which, given Denny Villeneuve's uh, track record, there's only been one film people have been fairly disappointed with him with, and that was Blade Runner twenty forty nine. It's because it was so slow, and even he was unhappy with how they edited it in final pr- in post production. Yeah, and so in my opinion, like Dune's a really really cool world and universe, like, but it was built that way in text. Yes. And it is very possible to stumble and make that whole world seem really bland. Like, yes. But well, it's... It, I, it looks like they have kind of nailed it, though, in terms of, like, making it, like, pop out the way your brain kind of does in the book, you know? Well, yeah. I mean, visually, it's stunning. Like, the shots... I can't really think of a bad shot in that trailer. I can't. So, <clears throat> I'm excited to see like, what they're going to do. I guess that's just me. It's like anytime there's like a desert world or anything like that, you know, it's kind of like, that's like the most bland thing you can think of. So, like, it takes a lot of, like, imagination well, on someone's Mad part Max to make is, me be like, keep that's mind, a really dude, cool desert world. Mad man. Max Fury Road was pretty much all desert. Yeah, yeah, I know. And but that's George, why, that's one of the reasons that took me so long to actually watch it, too, because when I watched the trailer, I was just like, yeah, it looks pretty cool, but I don't know, I'm just not usually interested in stuff like that. I, I think one of the things with the bland setting, what's cool about it is you have to see how the humans adapt to said setting because that's what I loved yeah. especially like in the 80s like because the still suit was such an important piece of technology and I thought they looked really cool and I'm glad they look really good in this yeah, one, like, one of the things that helps with this is their tech and yeah. like you know set pieces basically like being able to actually yeah. put interesting set pieces into that desert is like which in it's my like, opinion important to making the desert interesting it seems like that shouldn't be a difficult thing to come up with is that like the people that are carrying you through the movie are responsible for fleshing out your ability to interact with this world but you know yeah. apparently that is a hard concept for some movie makers I don't yeah. know for Michael Bay especially alright anyway ladies and gentlemen this was the Dune official trailer I'm excited for this I can't wait to see it if you all are excited let us know in the comments down below and until next time I'm Nate Micah I am Nick we'll see you then everybody Peace out.